In this video, we're going to learn how to improve the portability of our code when using functions like fgetc in C. This all came out of a conversation I actually had with a viewer, slide RSB here, where we're talking about the fgetc function used in an example. And they were mentioning how it's possible for the code to break if the right character is in the file. And this kind of sent me down a rabbit hole to figure out more about how fgetc works so I could talk to you about it. So let's first use fgetc in the sort of normal way that you see it in a lot of examples online. And then I'll show you how there could be a bug with that version of the code. So first we'll say file star file to make a file pointer. We'll open a file for reading. We'll say file is equal to f open file.txt for reading. We'll make sure the file opened successfully. So we'll say if file is equal to null, the f open didn't work. And we're going to return one and print f error opening file. Then we're going to use f get c to read each character in the file. And the way that a lot of examples do it online, not all of them, but a lot, is they'll have this car c. Then we'll use a while loop to read each character and we'll store each character into the car variable c there. So we'll say while c is equal to f get c file does not equal EOF. And then in here we could print out the character. So we'll say printf percent C backslash N and we'll print out the character. And then when we're done, we'll say F close file. And this should be file here. And this looks correct. So what's going to happen here is that F get C is going to read in the next character in the file. It's going to store it into C. And then once we reach the end of the file, fgetc is going to return EOF. Once we detect EOF, the loop is going to stop. And you've probably seen example code like this online. So we'll save this and we'll create a file and we'll test this out. So we'll make a file. I'll put in ABCDEF. We'll save it. We'll call it file.txt. And then if I compile this program here and run it, we get A, B, C, D, E, F, and it looks okay. But we actually have a potential portability bug in our code, and it has to do with this special EOF value here. So EOF is a special constant value that F get C returns, and it signifies either the end of the file or that an error has occurred. Now, programmers might think of EOF as something more like a null terminator, where in the same way a string is terminated with a special null terminator character, a file is terminated with a special EOF character, but that's not how it works. Files don't end with an EOF character. EOF is a special value that's returned by F get C to signify that we've reached the end of the file or that an error has occurred reading the file. Now F get C doesn't actually return a car. What it returns is an int. Now often in C, ints and cars are interchangeable, but they're not always so easily interchangeable because car values, as we think of them in terms of being characters, are really an int underneath in the sense that the number 110 represents a character. Now exactly which character each integer represents depends on the character encoding that we're using. The problem with EOF is that it's just another number that could represent another character depending on the encoding. So let's check out the documentation for F get C. And we see that F get C ultimately just returns init value and EOF is just a special return value, but it's ultimately going to be just an integer. EOF indicates either error or end of file, and we would want to use F EOF or F error to determine whether we actually had an error or end of file that occurred. But EOF is ultimately just another integer value that's being returned from the function. It's the integer 255 or FF in hexadecimal representation. The problem with it just being another integer is that integers are assigned to characters by character encodings. So this here is the ASCII encoding. And with ASCII, 
the number 97 represents the character A. The number 98 represents the character B. And in hexadecimal, we have like 6-1 represents A and 6-2 represents B and so on. 255 represents this special character here. It's a special Y looking sort of character. And you see the hexadecimal number here, FF, that represents that character there. So that character does have some name. I'm terrible with these things though, so I won't even try to try to guess it, but this special character here potentially could trip up our program because it basically stands for end of file as far as the EOF constant is concerned in the sense that this character has the same value as EOF. Let's actually try to open up our file in a hex editor. Let's try to actually drop in a character with the hexadecimal representation FF, and we'll see what happens. So right now our file has A, B, C, D, E, F. Let's try to open up the file and we'll drop in an FF hexadecimal value. So if we open up our file right now, we get 61626364656. If we look at the encoding, that matches this. So 61 hexadecimal is A, 62 is B, 63 is C, and that's what we have. We have A, B, C, D, F. So here we have 61, 62, 63, and so on. So 64 here should be D. Let's change that to F, F. Our character that will have the same value as EOF, 255. F, F is the hexadecimal representation. So we'll save this. And we'll save this here as file.txt. And we see it changed here. The character doesn't seem to show up very well. We'll get to that in a second, but let's try it here. So we'll save this. We'll run it and we get ABC and it stops there. So once it hits that FF character, it's as good as an end of file as far as F get C is concerned. That's what it returns is 255. And we have it that it stops at that point. So is this a problem? If we have a file that contains this special character here, is that gonna actually then terminate our loop here? And yeah, it would. So this is a big bug potentially. We do have something funny going on though. If we look at our file here, that character isn't really showing here. Why is that character not showing? Shouldn't we be getting this special character here? This Y with the two dots above it? If I copy and paste this in here, shouldn't it work just the same? Because this character should really be the number 255, which is FF in hexadecimal. Let's try that. I'll put it in here. I'll save it. Then we'll try to run the program. So we'll run it again. This time we get ABC question mark, question mark EF. So what's going on here? Something isn't quite right. It isn't quite what we expect. And what's going on here has to do with encodings again. So the ASCII encoding will map the number 255 to this special character. That's the ASCII encoding. There are other encodings. So UTF-8, that is a popular, more modern encoding. And that's what my computer is using, is UTF-8. It has a different way of encoding things. UTF is also a bit different as well, in the sense that ASCII will use only one byte to represent a character, whereas UTF-8 will use one to four bytes. So if I were to open up this version of the file now, Starting at C here, which we know is 63, we get C3, BF, and then 65 for E, and 66 for F. So what's going on here is that C3, BF is two bytes, not one. 
And this special character here is using up two bytes. That's how UTF-8 works. So UTF-8 isn't just limited to one byte per character. The character can be one to four bytes. So a full discussion of how UTF-8 works would really be outside the scope of this video. That would really be its own video tutorial. But here we have a table that shows the ranges of possible values that each byte in a UTF-8 encoded character can take on. And if you look at these ranges, none of them include the value FF. So we have like A4 to BF and like 80 to BF and things like this, but none of them include the value FF. What this means is that if we're using a UTF-8 character encoding, we should not encounter this bug because we're not gonna see the byte FF. At least we shouldn't encounter it the way we've seen so far. Now, part of the reason why the UTF-8 characters don't include a byte FF in their ranges is that those bits are actually used for other things in the case of UTF-8. For example, whether or not there's going to be more bytes beyond the first byte. So that's kind of why that's the case. Now, UTF-8 is basically the modern standard for character encoding. So if you look at usage statistics, it's been rising for a long time. And if you look at the latest statistics, 97.7% of websites use UTF-8 encoding. So UTF-8 is extremely prolific. So it sort of begs the question, do we really need to worry about this bug? Because we're not gonna see it with UTF-8 and UTF-8 is what our system is using and it's the majority of systems out there by a long shot. So I researched different people's opinions online about this subject, and I found that some people are adamant that because f get c and get car and related functions return an int, that we should just not use them with a car. You'll find other people that say, as long as we're willing to take a slight loss of theoretical portability, we can assign the return value to a car and it's not gonna be an issue. I'm more inclined to agree with this position here because if the bug can't occur, is it really a bug? It's more of a portability issue. If our program is going to read files of this encoding that may include this potential special character. That said, if we look at the way we're reading in each character in the file, we should probably be using these functions to help us. So we have these two functions here, FEOF and FERROR. And FEOF means end of file, F error means an error has occurred. We could use these functions instead. And we could assign the result of F get C to an int value instead. Let's try it that way. So here we'll say int C instead. Our while loop will look like this. We'll say while true, and to use this true value here, I'm going to include stdbool.h, but we'll say while true, read in the next character. So c is equal to f get c file. Now, if we've reached the end of the file, so if f eof file is true, we could break. If f error is true, we're going to break. We could put some error handling code in here or something like that. But in this case here, we're just gonna do a break. And then we could print out the character here. So we could say printf percent %c backslash n, and we'll print out the character c here as a character with this percent %c. So if we save this and we compile our program and run it, we get abc question mark, question mark, EF. And so we are reading in each of the bytes successfully and we're outputting the bytes here. Now these bytes here, when we go to output them with percent %c, we're not getting anything. If we stored this into a string, we would be able to print out this character here. So we could say car string 128, we'll just make it very big. And we'll say int i is equal to zero. Each character we read in, we could store into that string. So we could say 
string at i is equal to c, and we'll increment i. When we're done, we'll set string at index i equal to the special null terminator to terminate the string. And then we'll have printf string colon percent s backslash n, and we'll put the string here. And I'm actually just gonna put this here, these assignments below the if statements here because we only want to do this if we haven't reached the end of the file and we haven't had an error reading the file. So we'll save this, do a recompile and run it and we get the string printed out there. So this would be another way of reading the file that would be safer. And that's because we're depending on FEOF and F error here to tell us when we should stop reading from the file. Now there's actually one more way that our previous technique could go wrong. Let's actually go back to what we had before. So I'm just gonna do a bunch of undos here and go back to what we did before. Because there's one more way that this could go wrong for us. And it has to do with the possibility of an unsigned car being used instead of a signed car. So by default, with my compiler on my system, car is signed. If I said unsigned here, I could make it an unsigned car. Now the problem is EOF is not going to be recognized as end of file when I use unsigned car here. So if I save this, do a recompilation, I get a warning here and it's telling me that the comparison we're making here in the while loop condition is always going to be true. If I run it, we get this. It just goes on forever here. So what's happening here is because that condition is always going to be true, we just keep reading in the next character even past the end of the file. And we'll just keep on going quote unquote forever. Now that's happening because we have unsigned car here and to keep it simple, due to the conversions that are going to take place, EOF is not going to play nice with unsigned car. Now, with our compiler, car is signed by default. But the C standard does not specify that car must be signed by default. So there are C compilers, and there are compilers that, for certain systems, will actually have car be unsigned. If that's the case, again, this style of code will fail. So for example, if we go on Stack Overflow again here, here's a question. Any compiler which takes car is unsigned. Here there's an answer where some ARM compilers default to unsigned car. And there's another answer specifying that for GCC, the default is for x86 a signed car, but it depends on the system you're on. So we can't depend on a signed car. It could be an unsigned car, in which case we're going to have this slightly different bug that's sort of related to the same issue of we're using a car where an int is being returned. So we do have to be aware of both these issues. Again, this is really a portability issue at the end of the day. If you're doing something like a class assignment, I'm not going to lie, this is probably not going to be an issue. Even if you're developing something for an actual commercial system, so long as you're confident that this issue will not crop up, then the bug will not occur. And again, it's more of a portability issue. But we should definitely be aware of this. And in general, it's probably a better practice to use FEOF and F error to recognize when we're done reading the file anyways. So I wanted to make this video because I found this topic super fascinating. And hopefully you found this deep dive into the topic to be interesting as well. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.